Leonardo da Vinci was a self-taught Renaissance man. As a scientist, artist, and inventor, da Vinci's genius led to an unprecedented body of work. The drawings he left behind remain as testaments to his innovation and originality. One of da Vinci's main inhibitions was the lack of materials he needed to transform his concepts into reality. Jacques Fresco is also a self-taught scientist, architect, and inventor. For his entire life, he has been deeply committed to investigation, insight, and innovation. A prolific creator and builder, Jacques has been redesigning our entire culture for most of his life. While da Vinci needed advanced materials, Fresco has lacked access to the social and political resources needed to realize his most far-reaching ideas. My guest is an extraordinary Miamian, Dr. Jacques Fresco. Uh, I could go through all the things that Dr. Fresco has done. He's a social engineer, industrial engineer, designer, inventor, uh, consultant, was a consultant for Rotocraft Helicopter, director of Scientific Research Laboratories Los Angeles, designed and copyrighted various items, ranging from drafting instruments to X-ray units, uh, has had works published in the Architectural Record, Popular Mechanics, Saturday Review, uh, and has been a technical and psychological consultant and a motion picture industry member of the Air Force Design Development Unit at Wright Field. Uh, developed the electrostatic anti-icing systems, uh, designed prefabricated aluminum houses. What, what does it say in your driver's license? <laughs> what is the occupation? Industrial designer. Jack, you... Uh, Social engineer. Does it bug you that uh, people, when they talk about Jack Fresco in Miami, say that he's someone who's too far ahead of his time? His thinking is... We're not ready for advanced kind of thinking of no, I mean, that type. There's a bug I, I imagine every creative person in every field encounters that sort of problem. No, it doesn't. I can't afford it. There's too many things that are important. Jacques Fresco is a futurist. A futurist is someone for whom all thoughts and actions are based upon what tomorrow could be. He has been planning for the future since the 1920s. Not only is he a philosopher and theorist, but an engineer, industrial designer, and social planner. As a multidisciplinarian, he has studied everything from theology to behaviorism and from biology to the material sciences. 
Jacques Fresco doesn't want to just talk about what today will be like tomorrow. He has a plan to build an entire new world from the ground up. I'd like to go from the time you first started conceiving of drawings. Started drawing? Yeah. That's oh, that's very early. I started drawing. Eight, nine, eight or nine years old. About the future? Yes. I was always interested in the future, yeah. as far back as I can remember. There was a motion picture called Metropolis. It was different. It took my attention. It was the first out-of-the-box type movie. It depicted the future as a regimented system, which was totally unacceptable. But the architecture was interesting and the robotics in that film were interesting. I drew airplanes and cities of the future and underwater cities and floating cities and uh, skyscrapers with uh, landing platforms on them. I drew a and my idea of what a post office ought to be. Since the airport was so far from the post office, they had a truck deliver that. I figured, here's the long post office. Well, why couldn't we land on top, pick up the mail directly, and fly onward? So I would draw landing platforms on the rooftops of buildings, slightly angular, so the airplane didn't have trouble landing, because it, it couldn't be as long, but it would be slowed up by the incline. But then take off, they would go in reverse. Then I tried ships, drawing of passenger freighter ships, then aircraft carriers, and I showed it to my principal. And he said, have you ever heard of Bucky Fuller? I said, no. So he said, would you like to meet him? I said, yeah, sure. He said, what is he? He's an inventor, like you. He thinks up a lot of new things. Buckminster Fuller was one of the 20th century's most renowned futurists. Known primarily as the inventor of the geodesic dome, Fuller was a proponent of using technology with a humanistic approach. And there was Bucky Fuller. He was seated there with his car called the Dymaxium. And I said, what does that mean? He says, it's the highest form that can be attained in shape. I talked to him about social things. I said, uh, what about changing society to some other form whereby all people can benefit from the works of industry? He said, what do you mean? I said, well, if all, instead of working people going out on strike, give them a piece of the action. And so if business improved, they all got automatic pay. If it went down, they got less pay. So he sat back and he said, uh, what are you, some kind of a social planner? Is that what you want to be? I said, I don't know what the name is, but I think that would work. It would give people more incentive. He says, let me tell you something. It's tough enough just getting a new automobile out there. If you're trying to change society, this is years before he even lectured on things. Albert Einstein once said, the problems we have cannot be solved at the same level of thinking with which we created them. Uh, did you meet Einstein, Albert Einstein? Yes. Where did you get the idea to, to meet Albert Einstein? I, I was outside a theater called Radio City, and I saw a girl, come, a woman, come out with gray hair sticking up. I said, looks like Einstein's sister <laughs> to my friends. And then Einstein came out. And I think it was his sister. So, so I was just kidding about that. And I walked over and, and, I, and I said, uh, is it possible to meet with you? He said, why? I said, I have thousands of questions I want to ask. But he says, I'm, I live in Princeton, New Jersey. So tell me about the day. 